Hey guys, we're going to talk about sculpting and creating in Maya. And as a uh, as an example, this is basically what I'm going to be going over in this um, guide or this demonstration. Um, working with basics, viewport shading, polygon modeling, creation, uh, subdivisions, uh, component modeling, soft selection modeling, extruding, sculpting and freezing tools. And I like this as kind of a reference for keybinds. This goes over basically a lot of the things that I use. I need this as a reference um, just because of having to use so many different software. Sometimes I get them kind of mixed up. Um, but a lot of these are very useful and you'll probably be able to make a lot of, get a lot of, uh, save a lot of time working with these um, keybinds. So, Let's get to it and let's start with our basic layout for Maya. Um, one thing I would like to do before starting any new project, and I try to remember to do this, is to make sure that your workspace is set for what you need, right? Typically, it's gonna start off with modeling, which here we are in the modeling workspace for right now, or modeling menu setup. Um, our workspace is actually over here. Um, general is where it's at and for right now i would just keep it at general um, it's a little bit of everything but it's not too overwhelming so and if you are in general but something has been moved or you actually move something out of place then reset your current workspace and it will reset it back to its defaults which is great and this is basically what you end up with and so looking at the work our workspace um, you have an outliner here which includes all of the mesh and all of the lights and cameras and things that you will add into the scene um, you have your workspace here off to the side you have channel box which we don't have any use for right now because there's nothing here attribute editor and modeling tools show up along the side here those can also be accessed up here as well there's also one for um, character controls which we don't need to get into there's the attribute editor there's a modeling toolkit and um, you have the channel box there as well these are for tool settings this one right here with the hammer um, so kind of quick uh just you know explanation about where you can find things over here off to the side you have selection tool um, this is nice because it's a lasso tool that you can use in um, our workspace um, you have other paint selection tool, which is nice. Um, and then you have your transform tools, which are your move, your rotate, and your scale. Uh, your workspace tools or settings are over here. Right now we're in um, our normal panel layout. You can go into um, a four view layout like this. Another way to do that is to press the space bar on your keyboard. So whichever window I'm hovering over, if I hit spacebar, I'm going to be in that view. So I'm in top view here, spacebar, hover over the perspective, spacebar. Now I'm in perspective view and so on. You can also get into uh, panel layout views and um, changing your views, how you, how you see fit. Um, so I'm seeing a front view here on this side and a perspective view here. But let's say I wanted to change that up and I wanted to see a top view from this one. I can go to panels on this side, orthographic, and change it to top. And so whenever I go to the two view, I'll be able to see um, a top and perspective. So just a little rundown on what that is. If I don't want to see the outliner, um, which for what we're doing today, it's not super important. So I could click on that and make that go away. My workspace gets a little bit larger. Same thing if I were to click on these over here, I can minimize that and make my workspace even larger. So a little bit of the basics there. Um, another thing is up here on top, for each of your panel views that you have, you can control these settings here. So if I don't wanna see the grid, I can turn that off. I like the grid because it gives me a sense of where the world you know, at zero is. And what I mean by that is if I were to create a shape like this, it's set at zero, zero X, Y, Z. Okay. If I show that in the um, channel box and I select the shape here, it's at zero, 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 
right? So that means it is there, right in the middle. Um, now, if I wanted to see this, these objects in a different way, I can choose wireframe. And so I see that when it's selected, it turns green. So there's wireframe. I can do shaded and then you get into default material, which is basically what we start off with. Um, or you can do uh, wireframe and shaded. Um, materials which we don't have any applied and we're not going to deal with that yet and then lighting and because we have no um lights except for our default lighting this is basically what your objects would look like um, if they were rendered so and this is if you want shadows we don't again we don't have any lights set up so there's no shadows so i'll turn those off those aren't really important right now um yeah so that is basically um our basic controls for this. A handy thing about knowing this is because sometimes it's it's good to see, you know, one view. Let's say I want this view to be in wireframe, but I want to see the shaded view on this. I can have two different views, two different materials, two different or two different um, view types showing. You know, maybe I want to see what lights look like from this view, but not necessarily this. Um, and plus, sometimes you know, with our computers. You know, if you have lights and materials showing on all the things, um, that can really create a lot of lag and slow things down. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Um, you can always like change some things, some of your settings to make it a little bit easier to work. So back here now, um, let's look at our polygon modeling. So let's look here. When you open up Maya, this is typically where it starts off at. These are your basic modeling tools. Um, you also have other shapes here that can be selected as well. I'm going to control Z out of that. Um, so as you create these shapes, it's all, they're always going to get put at zero. It doesn't mean it covers it. The other ones are gone. It just covers them up. So I'm just going to kind of go through. I've got the sphere, the cylinder, the cube, the cone, I've got the torus, AKA donut. I've got a plane, which is basically what, just what that is is plain and we'll push that out here um, and a disc another flat object i'll put that over here so those are some of the basics now let's look at some other objects here create polygon primitives these are the ones i just threw out there i also have platonic solid and these are just good starting point type um, tools that you can kind of play around with so you can get into these and, oops, I didn't mean to create another one. Um, I'm not going to open up all of them, but yeah, pyramids, prisms, pipes, helix. Actually, that one's kind of a fun one. So you can kind of see what that is. It has a lot of ways that you can adjust and make that kind of springy looking. Um, but with each shape, you have different components and different ways that you can adjust them. Depending on what you're modeling, you'll typically be able to find some of the basic ones that you need to start with from these shapes here. Um, and then you can modify these into being whatever you need it to be. So those are some of the basic ones there. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm not going to um, get into every single one of them. But we'll start with our friend, the cube here. Now, there's not a whole lot happening with the cube. It's got six faces and it's got eight vertices, which means four points up here, four points down at the bottom. It's got number of edges, eight, let's see, 12, maybe um, edges here. And it's not very many for an object that you want to model. And so what we're going to do is create more polys on this cube. So that makes it easier to model. So if I go to, for instance, if I go to sculpt and choose this, and I want to sculpt on this object, it has nothing, it can't do anything because there's no mesh to really model. So I'm get out of that and get back to my normal tool here. So what I have to do is create some divisions on this object. And I can do that in a few different ways. I'm going to, Click on my attribute editor off to the side here. 
And since my cube is selected, it shows P cube shape one, which is great. Um, and that's not where we're going to start. We're going to start here. P cube one. And this shows first where it's located in the world. So if you should ever need something to get back to zero, you can always do that here. Each column is a different coordinate. So this is X, Y, Z. So if I were to take this object and move it, it moved, I moved it up on the Y axis. So it made a change here. If I ever need it to get put back into place, say I move it like way, you know, somewhere weird. I just need to go zero, 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 and it's back home. Same thing goes for rotating. If I rotate this, oops, I'll rotate, select my shape and rotate. We'll rotate it on this axis. I'm rotating on the Z axis. Rotate here. It's on the X axis. If I rotate here, that's on the Y axis. Now these are coordinates based on the object itself, not on the world. And so you can see it changes all of them. If I were to grab a place in between these axes, then it gets all topsy turvy and spinny and kind of lose like what's top and what's bottom. That can be kind of confusing. So I'm going to go back to zero, zero, zero. There we go. Scale is set to one. I'm going to keep it at one. There's no reason to make it any bigger or smaller really. Uh, but just for kicks, I'll do two. You see it doubles it Two. Oops. I made it 22. Let's go back to that two and two. You can see how that doubled the scale on each side there. And those are the basics that I'm going to cover for right now. And now that I've got this, um, I need to add some more divisions because actually I'm going to change this back to zero here. And so back to divisions, um, I'm going to go to P cube shape one. And I'm going to go to polycube one. I'm going to find that up here. And what I'm going to do is look at, here's the height, width, and depth. Those are all set to one right now, which is fine. Um, now I have subdivision width, height, and depth. And that is where I can change these sliders and see how it changes the number of subdivisions within that one side. On the width, here's the height. Here is the depth. So I can customize them right off the start when I create a shape. And so here they are. Um, if I only wanted, you know, one on one particular side, I don't have to have a depth division on there. Um, maybe I want half number of height as I do for the width. Um, then I can do that. So you can customize it here. And this is a good place to do that. Um, because later, as you start to build and model your objects, you're not going to have the be able to make these changes um, like this again. Um, you can still add more divisions, but you're going to have to do them a different way. Speaking of a different way, let's go and look at another option. So I'm going to set these back to one, one, one. And I'm going to click on modeling kit tools or modeling toolkit, sorry. And that is the same as this up here. And now I have an option that says add divisions under components. So if I go click on that little window pops up and it adds a division in there. I'll be very careful how many you add on this um, because it will freeze your computer. So I would go to maybe five. It gives us a decent amount of mesh to deal with when we start to get into sculpting later. So that's a good, another good place. But notice that when I did that, it did like multiples of five, like here's one division and here's that times five. And then here's that times five. So each time is multiple of whatever number of mesh that you have. So it really builds up fast. So I would not go. So obviously five does not mean you have five faces on each side. So be careful with that. That can be very misleading. All right. So now we're going to get into modeling and 
modeling with components. And you'll notice that when I did that and added the divisions, it made it uniform on all sides, which is okay for what we're doing right now. Our three basic types of components are gonna be face, edge, and vertex. You can access those by holding right click on your mouse and you can see face, vertex, and edge right here. Should you ever need to go back to object mode, which is what we're in right now, you can click on object mode. So let's say we start with face. And when I click on one of these faces, I'll zoom in here, pan over. Um, I can then move a face. I can shake it and stretch it out. I can rotate a face. And I can scale the face. And so notice that sometimes you might create some weird geometry if you overdo it. So let's say if I really overdid it, I could do that. And then I end up with some weird mesh and some weird geometry that might not render out and look very nice later. So you want to be careful about how much you overdo these things. Um, I'm just control Z out of that. Um, same thing goes if you wanted to select. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard, go back to my select tool. If I wanted to select multiples, I can shift and select down the line. If I hold shift and select over an area that I've already selected, it will deselect. If I held shift and double clicked next to a face that I already have selected, it will fill in from one to the other. So if I did from this to this, and then that, it fills in nice. If I wanted to create a full loop, I can double click right next to one and it creates a loop all the way around. And then you can go by, you can alter that if you need to. Um, for example, if I took this and scaled it in, that's one example. All right, so there's some basics there and these same things apply to whether you're working in vertex or edge mode. So if I were to go to edge, shift, select these, unselect them if I wanted to, I can deselect them. Um, make sure I'm in my selection tool here and I can do this and double click and it fills in the gaps, right? Um, again, if I wanted to select a loop, I can do that as well. And it goes all the way around the object. So um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but that is one of the basic things and something that's nice about this. So we're going to get into um, extruding. A couple of different ways you can extrude, depending on how detailed you want it to be. I can take this tool or take this face and use my translate tool, which is W. I can hold shift on this directional arrow and it says extrude. When I stretch it out, it brings it out and I can customize exactly where I want it to go, which is great. Um, another way to do that is to select an object or a face. I can go to extrude here and then it has a little window that pops up and I can tell it exactly how much to extrude based on a number. So if you needed to be very precise and had have things extruded to a certain distance for many objects, then you can, this makes more sense because it tells me exactly what it is. I can offset the, the face as well, which means it will kind of expand it really large. Um, and you can add divisions to it um, on that extrusion to help with modeling later. Should I need some bends or something like that in this one shape, that would be very helpful. So to kind of explain what that looks like, if I were to take this and take this shape, and let's say I wanted to rotate that face. So I can rotate it just like that. I can scale it as well, scale it back down. I can stretch it out this way. I can rotate some more. Notice how it changes the whole shape there. Um, I'm going to 
extrude once again, maybe this direction, rotate, scale, extrude, and so on. You can keep going and just kind of building off one face. One face has suddenly become a lot of different faces and a lot of different objects here. Um, so those are options for you. Should I need to add more um, divisions? Then maybe I would go to um, my extrude button here and add divisions to that at once I create this and extrude it outwards. I can tell it I want six divisions on this and then I can keep going and going and going. So that is working with extrusions can be quite handy. You can make a lot out of very little just by manipulating these components. All right, so that was a little bit about extrusions. Let's look at a different face over here and let's focus on soft selections. So let's say I wanted to select a face and I wanted to do, I wanted to pull this out. And so I go to my translate tool and I stretch this out, but it's also affecting the surrounding polys, but not, but nothing past that. It's just the surrounding ones. Um, but what if I wanted to have more of an effect on this whole thing other than just that? I'm going to use what's called my soft selection. And I can select B on my keyboard. And what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> sorry, what I'm going to do here is I see a gradient. And now it gives me kind of a range. This is called the fall off. This tells me how much this is going to affect the surrounding mesh. So if I want it to sort of affect very little, I can keep it there and stretch it out. It's still more than what I had before. If I change that fall off, and widen that circle, zoom out a little bit and change it. I've just created a huge dynamic change in the mesh. Um, by doing one control, it's affecting the surrounding mesh to varying degrees, depending on how the fall off is affecting it. So you gotta be careful with that. If you wanted to change the fall off strength and the size of the brush, you can go into tool settings like this and this one, because there's no tools to go by or no settings to change, um, it doesn't have anything here. Other tools that do have options to change are things like your selection tools and some of your sculpting tools that will show as well. So changing the strength of your fall off can be done by changing, um, holding B and changing that by um, making those changes with your mouse. So that's option for you is you start to, oops, I need my selection tool here. And if you wanted to select a bunch, let's say I want to do a paint selection. I want to, oh, that's a giant. I don't want to do that. Let's change that brush, make it smaller. Let's say I wanted to affect that area. Um, now, notice that it also selected through it because I have the camera base selection is off. So it's going to select everything. So if I don't want to do that, I can change this to on. And so it's only going to affect the things that I paint on this side. So if I want to select these and manipulate those with my soft selection tool, then it's going to affect a broader range. And it's not because I turned on camera based selection. It's only going to base my selection off of what I'm selecting here, not what's on the opposite side of the shape. So that's kind of handy and can be kind of frustrating if you forget to turn things off and on. Um, so as a general rule, if you tinker with that, once you're done, go immediately back and change it. Otherwise, you're going to make some really crazy changes to your, your, sub, uh, your, your mesh that you probably didn't want to. So this is pretty handy. Um, as you can see, you can make huge changes to whole meshes by just using your soft selection tool 
and manipulating them at different levels. To get out of soft selection tool, I'll press B again and it goes away. All right, so talked about extruding soft selections. Now let's get into some sculpting. I'll go to a different side here. I'm going to go to my shelf that says sculpting. All of these are referred to as different shelves. You have curved surfaces, poly modeling, sculpting, rigging, and so on. I'm going to go to sculpting. And in order to sculpt, what you need to do is go into object mode. So I'm going to right hold click and object mode. And I'm going to choose just the generic lift a surface type sculpting tool. And if you don't see anything show up, it might be perhaps because your sculpting tool is too large. So if you just see a dot, you might need to zoom out to see your actual sculpting tool and then hold B and left click and left to right will change the size of your brush. So that makes it a little bit more manageable. A little bit smaller there. To change the strength of that brush, I'm going to press M and middle mouse click up and down. And that is the strength. So here is very little strength on a sculpting brush. Okay, see the changes that it made there. Here is quite a bit more and the changes that it makes now. So keep that in mind. Um, other ways that you can access that is by double clicking on the last tool used, which is this one. And if I double click there, I can also change the size and the strength of the brush here. I can tell it to invert and there's other changes that I'm not even gonna get into right now. So it gets into fall off and so on. So that is the basic tools that I would really be concerned with for now. And if you want to reset it, you can click reset and it will go back to its defaults, which sometimes is needed. I'm going to close that out. So let's say you do some sculpting and you want something to look symmetrical. Some people got some practice with this. You can go to symmetry, object X, Y, or Z, and that will base your, um, that will give you, you see two dots now. One of them is one that you're controlling, the other is the mimic, basically. And so as you sculpt, it will sculpt the same thing on the opposite side. So that could be really handy. Each of these has its own particular way of sculpting and you can kind of experiment with each one as you go. If you wanted to, some shortcuts that if you wanted to, and turn off this. This is another one that you have to be careful of is to turn on and off your symmetry as you need it. If you wanted to smooth something back down with one of these tools, then using shift as you brush will smooth it back to kind of its original state. If you wanted to push instead of pull for this particular tool, I can hold control and push an object inward like that. Now, if you make some changes, sculpt, and you want, you don't want to alter that anymore, then you can go to this snowflake tool. I call it the freezing tool here, and it's selected. I want to make sure that this down here does not get affected. And so what I want to do is open this up. I'm going to reset the tool here and I'm going to resize the brush because I know my brush is not that giant. It's really quite small. So the strength is all the way up to hundred, which is fine. We'll see what that does. I'm going to brush over the parts that I don't want affected. So it's freezing it. All right. You get to play Mr. Freeze for a bit and it's going to freeze it more over the areas that are darkest. So that means these light blue areas can still be affected quite a bit. Now you can overpower the freeze in some cases with a tool or a sculpting tool that is really, really strong. Um, so I'm going to go back to the basic one here and I'm going to start to sculpt around what I just did 
and you notice that it's affecting the areas around it, but not as I'm brushing over it. Notice that the light blue areas are still a little affected. The darks stay kind of the same. So that's some good things to know about sculpting. So if you really worked hard on defining and refining um, some mesh, that's a great way to preserve that work. And if you wanted to go back, you can hold control and with your, oops, with your um, freeze tool and unpaint something. You can also, because sometimes you still might not get some of these light areas. And so you can also do unfreeze all, and that will make sure that it gets all of it unfrozen for you. So that is a wonderful, beautiful mess of a mesh that I've made right here. And that's kind of the basics of working with sculpting and modeling. Um, we know how to do selections and soft selections and maneuver and change your different components. And so now I'm going to let you guys loose and work on either experimenting on your own uh, mesh that you create or get into the character mesh um, modeling assignment that challenge that I have for you guys. So that is pretty much it for now. Um, and we'll see you back for our next demo.